So lay down your burdens, lay down your shame. Um, you know, in the news, when they, they interview people and they're sitting on their couch, Yeah. I've always said, if I'm ever interviewed by the news, I am not sitting on the couch. I'm going to stand up, because nobody <laughs> looks good sitting on a couch. <laughs> Yeah, somebody what ties up. Well, I did at least pick Sunday morning when, <laughs> when we're dressed up. When we're kind of dressed up. Yeah, but you know what I mean. Standing as much, you know, you look slimmer, you look more poised. <laughs> Especially, you know, the, the news they choose, they, you know, the backgrounds, you know, family pictures. Or, How do you feel about this? How do you really feel? Well, just because you've never thought, thought about it. it. Never <laughs> noticed. Never noticed. <laughs> okay, I have an opinion about it. Yeah, you do. You, you're smart. It's a good opinion. But I never want to be interviewed for the news. <laughs> okay, so I was thinking maybe this would be a place we could video some things. Just what? to take some videos, but maybe this isn't a good location for us to take some videos. We're sitting down? Sitting down. What are we going to take a video of? I don't know. We're already videoing. We, we recorded that lovely yeah, conversation. Yeah, yes, yes, yes. So I get to be Abby and make faces now? <laughs> well, uh, maybe... Maybe that's it for today. That's okay. <laughs> two minutes of exactly what's needed. Fix my tie again. Fix your tie again. Ties are weird. Okay. Well, like men men wear all of these clothes, right? We wear these coats, and we're usually hot. And, I and, and I, and I society, wear fourteen layers. Well, and then but our society is that women should be almost mostly uncovered well in the i mean the style now is naked legs which so how stupid right is this and, and then the guys have to wear these coats these tuxedo coats and all that stuff well, you don't have to but. no but that's what you're supposed to when you mm, dress it's, it. a, it's yeah. a the dumb thing in our do you society. know do you know how they started it's a cravat no it was actually the elizabethan rough yeah so so we be glad that it changed because a rough would be a lot worse than a tie. And a rough sounds like terrible. Something you want to put around your neck. <laughs> you know, it always is like you know, the dog collars. <laughs> you know, that keep the dogs from yeah, scratching. Yeah, yeah. Rough, rough. That's not. That's not how you do no, it. No. They couldn't have been comfortable. They, you know, they didn't have materials that they could. Anyway, they they got slimmer and all of that. So, today is February 11th, 2018. Um, it's been a month since we went to Dr. Hart. Oh, was it on the 9th? It was on the 9th. Oh, okay. So, there's a suggestion from a good friend, President Woodland, that we should make some videos. And I've had the idea. And um, as if I don't make enough videos for my work, and I said we're going to make some videos, Carrie said. I'm in one of your videos. Or which one? Um, in you were setting up for um, Den at Rick's. Oh yes, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we did the test there. <laughs> yeah. Quinn's in one of my videos too. Oh, is he? Yeah, in Dulles. I had him walk oh. behind me and turn around. <laughs> yeah, you have a lot of random people in the background. Well, I have a lot of <laughs> so she said we were going to record about Luca Pacioli, which is what I just finished this week, and I said no, we have enough videos about Luca Pacioli. So, um, any big boring book that dad's reading, we'll, we'll talk about that. Yeah, that's no. Well, you could play that? a Beethoven piece. You could play Beethoven piece. You could play <laughs> Mina that was I cool. cannot play Mina Well, second. not the second, not the last movement. You could play um, the first movement. Um, I'd have to work on it. Like I told you, it's got four flats. Yeah, okay. It's, it's not, I have some other, um, I've got Ode to Joy. Carrie's been playing piano every day. For the last month, keeping that Longer skill. Longer than that, when we talked to Doug. Oh. He told me. He told me. Keep working at it. Was that before Christmas? Mm, no. Mm. 
might have been. I don't know. No, it was after we'd seen. This the all. So go back. Where? So when did this kind of start? Two years ago. Um. You were doing the you're, quilt you're for Emma. It. No, Emma's quilt. You think it was just challenging? Because I remember it being Emma's a bit challenging. Emma's quilt was was not that challenge as challenging as no, as not Ridge's when, a year ago. Was. But a year and a half ago. It, it started with the, I, you know when you drink hot chocolate and it burns your mouth, burns your tongue? I noticed off, July, August, two years ago, that my tongue always feels like it's burned. All the time. Same place. And I don't drink hot chocolate. Nobody ever. Nope. I don't drink coffee. Don't, you know, nothing that would burn my tongue. So, you know, it was kind of one of those weird things. And I had an appointment to go for a yearly exam. The gynecologist and mentioned it to her. And she was like, hmm, that's weird. And then she moved on. And so I had a teeth cleaning. So I, had to, I asked the dentist about it because I read something, you know, dentists are, they, they're supposed to check for mouth cancer and stuff like that. So they're. They're kind of skilled in that area. And the dentist said, hmm, that's kind of weird, and went on. <laughs> and that's been the response from, how many did we cite? Like six different six medical doctors, professors yeah, now? Yeah, I was gone, well, that's a weird thing. That's a weird thing. And then they went on. <laughs> so that was the last six months, because you went to the OB about six months in, ago in, in August. August. But it started a year before well, that. When, yeah, it, well. Yeah, I think so. I remember. It August. was after I got back from um, Canada, and I went. Yeah, yeah. So that was in July, July but, uh, but right before Abby got married. Yeah, yeah. Um, so kind of, you know, there was that, and we think that it's related to this, even though that the doctors, well, that's weird. We think that it, as they described it, and the reason we think, yeah, we think that is so. The on March or on. January 9th, when we met with Dr. Hart, he is a neuro neurologist. neurologist, very skilled doctor, trained at Johns Hopkins, really kind of a weird guy. Yeah, he's, he's a different man, but yeah, he's got some skills. Yeah, and a really interesting um, sort of, I, I guess I'd call it bedside <laughs> manner, but yeah. it wasn't bedside, yeah, <laughs> but just, just very UT Southwest putting Anyway, John so we got we got that there because my gynecologist said, you know, I think I, I I told her that I was having lots of memory issues, and she said, you know, I think we should look into that. And so she sent me to a neurologist here in Flower Mound, who recommended an MRI. So did that, and it didn't show anything, which is not uncommon. To, yeah. you know for, yeah. and you know it's kind of the good news right if there was a tumor or something then that would be yeah the bad news um so that neurologist said you know we need to send you to a specialist so dr john hart junior, junior is at ut southwest um it's a teaching hospital it's a very large facility lots of Parkland. research it's um, part of Parkland complex. Yeah, it they they have Nobel prizes and you know it's it's probably one of the best here in Texas, and um, so we went to this appointment. Dad went with me. It was early in the morning, and it was kind of weird because we were sitting in the waiting room for a long time, like an hour past yeah. our time our appointment time. Go in and there was an, another doctor and a and a and a woman who came in with us. And I had seen them in the waiting room, but I, I, I kind of assumed the other doctor was a, like a pharmaceutical, but yeah. no, he's a PhD in neurology, and he was there to just. And the woman maybe was a med student. Yeah, because she she did the grunt work, you know, getting the papers off the yeah, off the printer, off the printer and that sort of thing. But that sort of thing. The but... the PhD guy he, maybe said, ten yeah. words well, I mean, the whole time. Until we... the... An Until hour, the end, yeah. yeah, the hour. He didn't say anything in the first hour. They they definitely deferred to Dr. Hart, but anyway, so sit down, start this discussion, and he turned to me and said, "So, 
What's your problem? You wouldn't let me say anything. You wouldn't let Dad say anything. Yeah. No. 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 You be quiet. You, you, <laughs> I mean, you, basically. You know, he said to Carrie, your family's telling you you got some problem, but you don't have any memory problems. You can be, because they're nuts. So you just, you can be honest yeah. with me and, and I, I get it. And it was, it was very off-putting, actually, the way he started. But I, I now understand. He, he sees patients whose family are saying, you know, my mom's not right, but mom feels okay, but the family's trying to force things on her anyway. So I'll start this conversation, and he's asked a bazillion questions, um, had me do a bunch of different physical things. Um, the, do you remember the one? He said, can you do this? I think really hard. Yeah. I got yeah, it. I got it. <laughs> I, didn't, you, I, you did, I did it this, this time. Way. This yeah, way. he said, you're not quite right. And then it's he did, a spatial thing, and I can do this. Yes. But at the time, you couldn't. I think there was something about it. That, was it this? Or anyway, yeah. yeah. He had me walk across the room, um, uh, do some, you know, resistance sort of things. Yeah. Um, can't really, Oh, and, and a bunch of, you know, you've got a minute to say all the words that you can think of that start with a certain letter. Um, I don't remember what else. I mean, there were, there were quite a few different. Uh, he told me a word and then asked me to repeat the word. Well, he told me a word and then told me a bunch of other words. And then what was the first word I asked you to remember? Yeah. Um, you know, so... so A little bit of math. Yeah. Simple addition, Simple. subtraction. Yeah. On, you know, anything below 100. It wasn't, you know, ones that yeah. was in the single digits, but... Just stuff that, you, you know, most people can just do in their head. Um, so a bunch of that sort of thing. And then he then he got out the computer and okay, so you know. Well, you described though more of what the issues were too. Right. Too. Yeah. Were, and we asked issues? lots of lots of questions about what were the issues that you described. Um, to him? Spatial issues. Uh, I noticed it um, on the piano because you have to keep you know one eye on the treble clef and one eye on the bass, and it. It blends, and and I lose my my place. It's kind of like you know when you're reading along and then you lose where you are. You know when I first noticed it. I mean, you did a quilt a year ago for Bridge. Yes. And you really. And it took me. I mean, uh, her, thirty hours to do that quilt. I redid Carrie's, it. Carrie's, redid it and redid it and redid it. Carrie's uh, degree was in clothing construction, so she could look at and things I've, I've, and know the pattern. Yeah. How the, how it goes together, and I had to go help her do and I've figure out how to put. Ever. Yeah. It, to it, this it. this quilt was particularly, and I now know this is what was going on. It was a variety of different shapes. Yep. And fitting all of those, you know, into the bigger picture. I did I did a t-shirt quilt for Emma the year before, and it wasn't as difficult because it was mostly just rectangles. Yeah. And sewing them together. Um, so I learned a little bit there that at the time I didn't process that as a spatial issue, but now I know that, yeah, because there was something else I tried to do. Well, there was, the next thing that I noticed was you went to pick up Nancy Zafir at, yeah, I couldn't, at Love Field. I couldn't follow the GPS. You couldn't follow the, the GPS. They're doing a bunch of construction in the area, so the GPS wasn't. You well, know. and we didn't have the voice portion of the GPS turned on. Yeah. We, we'd follow, we typically just followed the map, and we didn't listen to the voice. Right. And, and I've always been good with maps. Yep. I, you know, yep. but the GPS doesn't always orient the right way. And well, that's what, the what I can't do. I might, you know, I can't reorient yep. um, in my brain. And then the next thing... I noticed was when you had to go pick up Quinn. Quinn in, in San, San Antonio, Antonio, which I've been to that university uh, four or five times. And I, I could not. Had to call me in. We had to talk through it. Yeah. And I'd set the GPS. I'd stayed in Wimberley the night before, and I'd set the GPS, and something happened. It, it must it, continue to your next place or the next morning. Anyway, in the morning correctly. it wouldn't pull up what I had had saved to anyway so it was kind of not not good it, yeah, I think it scared us both that 
there's something well, I, this is I not, was getting lost and that's never happened before this is not the right thing we also noticed in the summer uh, playing card games that yeah she couldn't keep track of the sequence of steps. sequencing and then also you know when you you're, you're making a a plan for you know I'm gonna play this card next and this card I couldn't remember what what the plan, what the plan was, was. <clears throat> You know, so now, now I only play games where it's totally random. <laughs> <laughs> so she might There's... like uh, killer bunnies here. Soon. No, no, no she's not because gonna, it she, ends bad. She's not going to like that no matter what. <laughs> Even though that's random. You could be ahead the entire game and then lose <laughs> in the last two minutes. Okay. That's a dumb game. That's a dumb game. <laughs> Quinn won't let us get rid of it. No, he's hidden it somewhere. <laughs> It's somewhere in the house. Because you've threatened it so much. <laughs> That's right. Because I was going to just throw it away. <laughs> I've never particularly liked yeah, that I game from I the just, first we had it. Just, uh, but so so the games that I... And we haven't actually played... And no, I feel bad about this. We haven't no, played games in a long time. Mm -hmm. We we played some um, guillotine, um, which is kind of fairly random. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, my my favorite is skip bow now because it's totally random. <laughs> yeah, I can yeah. play skip bow. Yeah, you can play skip bow. Okay. But anything I, I I'd have to have a strategy for. Yeah, I really struggle with. Um, so that you know, so, so that, we described all of that to Doctor Hart. Yeah, that, those sorts of things. Um, so one of the first things he said after you know, so he's he's thinking about this and he's okay. Obviously, there's a bunch of tests, and so he he says we're we're just going to do tests for everything to eliminate. I, mean, I think he said he said well, you know things that can cause this are things like Lewy body disease, which is a yes a, a, or, a type of dementia um, or chemotherapy if you've had cancer treatments that can you know those similar symptoms there. Um, but I did. I think he said he did say about that time. He said, "Well, the things we're seeing we're probably an hour into the discussion. Mm -hmm. This is looking like. Do you remember what it's called? Parietal. Mm -hmm. No, no. No. Posterior. Posterior cortical atrophy. Yep. Posterior cortical atrophy. It says it's looking like that. He said it kind of quickly, and I think he might have said it to the other PhD. Yes. Yeah. It right. was more for their benefit than for ours. Than for ours. And then he said, okay, so now we're going to try to go find reasons why this might be happening. Other than other than PCA. Because we hope it's not that. Yeah, he kept saying, oh, you want it to be anything but this. You want it to be syphilis. You, yeah, you want it syphilis? to be Okay, we're going to order the HIV. syphilis test. We're going to order the HIV. Be... Did you get HIV? We know good. what to do with It'll HIV. Good. That would be a good thing if we you had HIV. To, we know how to treat that. Uh, <laughs> really? Lyme disease. We're going to treat. We're going to we're test for Lyme, Lyme disease. disease. Yeah, the Lyme disease. You go and get anything with ticks? Yeah, okay. You go girl scan? Okay, maybe, maybe yeah. we got Lyme disease here. So, and then he turned to, to us and said, um, so I have to ask this question. Do you have, a, have that much? Because what we're going to do here is going to be expensive. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That so that, that kind of clued off too that, oh yeah, we're going to do a bunch of crap here and <laughs> all kinds of bazillion stuff. I mean, it kind of it got near the end and he said, okay, so yeah, if, if all of these things come back negative, then uh, the last thing maybe that would confirm this is we'll do a lumbar puncture. Yeah. Well, and he also mentioned another... MRI with contrast, with contrast, which is supposed to show. Yeah, they inject uh, you with a dye. With a dye that, they... that can show things. I don't know. Yeah. Um, well, one of the things they considered too was MS. Yeah. But I. But she had yeah. no physical. That yeah. was the thing. Everything you kept going back to. There's no physical manifestation. Yeah. Louis yeah. body, I think, has a physical aspect to it. Um, yeah. Most of the things he mentioned do. Do. And I, you know, healthy and able to do all of that stuff. So research after being with him, I've learned that this disease was first named in 1988. The first international conference was in 2012. There's no, um, there's no established criteria for diagnosing this. There's no um, 
No treatments. No cure. No cure. No. Um, it's no, um, no it's listed no. as a. If you go on the Alzheimer's website, they have a, a large listing about this, so it kind of gets classified in that same. Because because space. it eventually does mimic an Alzheimer's sort of thing. It so early onset Alzheimer's is something that people in their forties get. And then what normal Alzheimer's is more 70s and 80s. Um, this particular, the PCA, is something that hits people in the 50s, which I'm 51. Yeah. And he said, Dr. Hart said, and you know, the, one of the difficult things about that is you still have jobs and kids at home and stuff like that at your age. So they, we went after. He, he figured it, he, you know, he thought he, well, we're going to test for, I'm going to send out for all of these tests. Um, then, and it was an hour and a half appointment. He said toward the end, he said, how did you get in with, in yeah. to see me? How did you get to me? Because the, the next time we could see him is not until May. Yeah. And this was January 9th. Yeah, and he <laughs> and he's only there one day a week. Yeah, he's only there we on don't Tuesdays. Where, we don't know where else he practices. Yeah, and... don't know anything about that. But you know, he, he just he, he really. How'd you get to? You'd see that at least it twice. It was it was after. I think it was after Christmas when we made the appointment. No, no, it was, it was before, before Christmas. It was the first of December. It was a month after the MRI. Yeah, after it? the MRI. So it was a month. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and he was surprised. So. Little tender mercy there. I yes. think that we got into him. Yeah, and the, the diagnosis <clears throat> makes sense. I mean, there was yeah, a, there was a sense of relief. Well, we had a name. you know, of course, mix, mix, but we had a name. He he did tell us, "Don't go home and Google this." Yeah. You, I don't, don't want you to. Do and we that. haven't and done so very much of it. No, I a, a little bit. But just just some basic stuff, but no. yeah, we haven't we haven't looked at how it progresses. Um, and, and he did mention that it. It affects senses. It's the sensory part of my brain. So that would explain the tongue thing. Yeah. That would explain playing the piano and my eyes not. He said people with this often go to doc, go the to ophthalmologist. Ophthalmologist. They go to the eye doctor go, to, go to eye fix doctors, this. Fix I can't. this. I can't see. It's, what's wrong yeah. with my. Which I said, did. He said, stop. <laughs> don't go to, Which don't I go. did. Yeah. I have brand new contacts that. Are now in the drawer because, yeah. you, you know, anyway. So we went downstairs after the appointment to blood draw. And, you know, the U.S. is having the worst flu, flu season, yeah. season they've had in a decade. And the place was just packed. packed. Just, oh, I, there were so many people there. Anyway, she, cute phlebotomist who just chats away while she pokes and pokes and pokes <laughs> Not, seven vials of blood they took so and and he he warned us you know some of these i'm sending off to the mayo clinic so it'll take a while but they have a, a online system so that when results do come in we get them and we we got a set of results two weeks ago yeah and everything was it looked like everything was negative, negative. We there see. were a couple of things that we couldn't um, yeah, have something the, the about, knowledge to yeah, something about the neurotransmitters or something that we don't. But it didn't yeah. look like it looked like everything that said expected range. If she was within the expected range, and, and I, I did, was, I had an appointment with the gynecologist again for meds. They got me on some. Um, they tried vitamin B twelve and vitamin D. Well, and and hormones. And hormones. Um, because she thought, you know, this might be a yeah. normal life cycle sort of thing. and and But Dr. Hart wants me to keep still taking those. But anyway, the, where I was going with that is we went into the doctor for this medication follow-up. And she, you know, well, Dr. Hart said, you know, keep, still keep taking those medicines until we find out anything else. Um, but... Dad went with me to that appointment, and he took the results that we had. So the doctor did look at them there. Well, she's not a doctor; she's a nurse practitioner. Nurse practitioner. She said, but she, yeah, everything looks looks fine. Um, and there were probably, but I would guess about 
a half of the tests that he ordered, the results maybe were bad, more, but, yeah. but maybe more than that. So today we're, we're still waiting for tests. Um, I did get a phone call from UT Southwest during that they want to do um, neurological. neurological testing. Which it's, is just like memory. Yeah, a more in-depth thing than what he was doing in, he the was doing in the audience. Yeah. Um, seriously in-depth because they said eight hours, plan on eight hours That'll to do this. A month from now. More than it's month. the 22nd of March. March. And then we have we have an appointment with Dr. Hart in May, the 5th of May. So that's where we stand. I'm sure that 5th of May will also, you know, be getting another MRI. We might. We might do that. I don't know. With the contrast? I don't know. Maybe. I guess you could do that in April. Because we talked to Dr. Clough. He kind came and kindly came and, you know, just sat and chatted with us and he he says that an MRI can miss something it they can be a quarter of an inch off and and miss something so the the more more detailed is probably where he'll go we're, we're guessing at that but the the hope my hope right now is to get Quinn independent before it becomes something that well, yeah. really affects. Um, Dr. Hart did say driving. He asked me about driving. I said, yeah, there's times when I'm not sure about the lane usage here. And he said, well, be careful. Be careful. That um, would probably be the first yeah. major. And, and I already kind of, kind of feel that in that I don't like to drive at night. Yeah. And, and I don't. And we wouldn't if have I her leave, go someplace outside of Plano and lose. So, someplace where I'm not familiar with. I, I don't know that I would go. I, I mean, I probably could given enough time. Yeah. But, yeah. you know, I just stay, stay pretty close to home. So that's where it is right now. Yeah. Um, this today is the, I don't know what the date is. 11th. We're, we planned a video conference with. Alex and Kristen, Ross and Abby. We know. I uh, asked President Clark, Com Com President Cannon, our state president last week, said, hey, I feel like I need to tell Edna's mission president. And um, so President Cannon was a little shocked at the news I was sharing with him, which I probably didn't take quite enough time to explain it to him. <laughs> and, uh, We've had a little bit of time to process, and uh, we're we're finding other people need need time to process too. A little, little, too. <laughs> little bit of time to process. We yeah. can't quite dump them so fast on them, but um, so he asked to have lunch with me on Saturday. Um, he asked to share with his counselors. We're gonna talk to the bishop today to let him know we don't need anything. I found you know. We had this sister in the ward, Robin. Um, Rado or, or Low? Low, Robin Low. They had a child that had a medical issue, and Carrie was her home teaching, her visiting teaching companion. And she found that sometimes people wanting to give service is more emotionally draining to have to keep explaining <laughs> what's mm -hmm. going on in my drive just now, thinking about. The conversations we're starting to have it's kind of taxing us a little bit yeah. to have to emotionally go through it every time because i mean by and large not not a whole lot has changed i mean i'm still it, it, those things i struggle with yeah. recipes yeah this morning she processed that she can't do a portion of the house bookkeeping that she's always done it's always been complex for my business expenses but that was a bit of a loss that she's mm -hmm. always done that and uh, yeah, so the, there are that. some some changes for, you know, for people that are in it. But I guess what what you're saying though is that we're not looking. We don't need any help. We don't need, we don't need any help. We don't need you know the <laughs> no. the warriors to come out to. No, no. Um, but no. there have been occasions where we've shared and 
Um, yeah, that's kind the right people. thing to do. Kind yeah, people. kind people. Yeah. All appropriate sort of responses and caring responses. Yeah. yeah. And we've often said to each other, the, the my work the last year and a bit has been kind of unstable. And at times <laughs> I've said, well, I have more peace than my circumstances warrant. And that's kind of become a theme yeah. for this. We, we, have, we more, have felt a tremendous amount of peace. More peace than our circumstances. There have, there have been moments of panic, but... <laughs> Yeah. You know, when you start to see that things are falling apart and it's things that you've always done, like, well, it is a little bit of yeah. fear and terror. <laughs> but for right now, it's I'm still. Our love for each other has never been stronger. Well, yeah. Our relationship's good. Yeah. We do have a different bucket list than we had six months ago, though. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's funny how that melted away so quickly. Yeah, the things that seem to be seem the things that you dream priority. about all of a sudden, like, well, that's not that important. Or, that didn't happen. Uh, I don't yeah. matter to me. And our, and our thoughts mainly have gone toward our family and our kids. You know, so we probably won't serve a mission or yeah. even work in the temple. I won't. You probably could work in the temple, but um, those sorts of things that I always thought we would do. But I, we may have more time to our capacity to help with our grandchildren than we would have if we were planning yeah. on missions and that's been a so comforting thought too it has been that i could still be a mom be help my kids in those sorts of ways yeah yep. well there you are that is, I didn't know what we would record. I guess maybe, but thirty minutes is probably long enough recording. You you can edit out all of the <laughs> the rough. All of the. Uh, <laughs> that's what I do in my own videos, but I'm not usually talking to someone else. So I think there's less. Um. What um, do I say next? This sort of thing. Yeah. It'd be good to do some other videos though. Okay. Because it's. <laughs> Be truthful here. <laughs> yeah, yeah but there's a good portion of our marriage that's like that. Yeah. Well, I get yeah. As a final thing, and then we can turn it off. I one of the things that I decided to do was you know to look for those tender mercies, the the little stuff, and it's actually well, it's still about that, but I'm actually also looking for examples of people who've gone through hard things and yeah. have found them to be manageable or even, you know, blessing in disguise. Well, and that's part of my feeling as I thought about this just today. I'm actually kind of, I'm grateful for the chance to prove to you how much I love you. Even though I don't want you to have to do that. I know you don't want me to have to do that, but I am grateful well, to our, be able to show you that, demonstrate that well, deeply. Well, our whole marriage has been about you. You being, enabling me. Being full of energy you and full of ideas me. and me just carrying on at home. And now it's time for me to, to demonstrate. I can... Perhaps. You can tone down what you I can perhaps wanted give, to do. I can give a portion of the service you have given me over the years. Or perhaps you'll be yielded. Maybe we'll make that happen. Yeah. That's that hope too. There's the light. Or or minim you know, minimizing the Digression. Stops. Yeah. Well, no. But, but watch it. Watch okay. it all the way turned around. We have that hope. Just, just stay right where we are. No, we want you to back to where you were, so we can do all those things. So, <laughs> back on our bucket list. Okay, back to me. 
Well, might as well ask. I mean, you're going to ask for something but, big. But, you know, well ask for big. it would still be a total miracle if it just stopped here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But, because I haven't lost that much at yeah. this point. But No, that's true. And I'll need to find some new hobbies. Dr. Hart suggested TV watching. Yes, you he might, did suggest. You might. We said so. We don't watch much TV. He said, you might want to take up watching TV. Well, and he was totally serious, too. He says, I spend quite a bit of time watching television. It, it can be just as good as other things. He said, but it has to be focused television watching. You can't be working on something else. <laughs> and, you know, I don't. He seems sincere in it saying seems sincere. it. I don't know how much time he spends watching TV. But I, think, uh, yeah, I think he was encouraging he to people that he sees. That, yes, yes, and it was, might a, have been more of a... This is a useful thing to do. Yeah. I don't know Some, what the future will be. But. Okay. I love you. I love you too. Thanks for being taken with me. Even if I had to sit on the couch. <laughs> <laughs> so lay down your bed.